Good afternoon and welcome back to the stated meeting of April 22nd, 2020. We will now have the adoption of minutes by council member Powers. Thank you. I now, thank you, uh, Majority Leader. I now move the minutes of the stated meeting of February 11th, 2020 and February 27th. Council member Powers. Yes. Can you please pause? Yes. Madam Majority Leader. Yes. I ask that you please state that the meeting will stand at ease. The meeting will stand at ease at this time. I believe we're having some technical issues with the feed, which is why we're standing at ease. We want to just make sure that all council members have access as well as that it is live streaming appropriately. So that is what the staff is working on right now. That is why we are standing at ease. Mr. Parliamentarian. Madam Majority Leader. Yes. The technical issues are resolved. You can now recognize Council Member Powers. We will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Powers. All right, second time. Uh, I now move the meetings of February 11th, 2020 and February 20th, 27th, 2020 be adopted as printed. Thank you. Messages and papers from the mayor. Communication from the mayor, mayor M230 through M236, mayor's executive budget, expense, capital, and CD budgets and supporting schedules. Finance. M237, city debt and reserves. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M238, withdrawing the name of Nisha K. Butler for appointment to the New York City Tax Commission. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. M239, communication from the chancellor submitting the proposed amendment to the fiscal year 2020 to 2024 five-year capital plan. Referred to finance. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. Uh, M240, I will now ask the clerk to call the roll for today's land use call up item. This is just a vote on the land use call up calendar right now. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Aye. Brennan. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. I vote aye. Constantinidis. I vote aye. Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. <laughs> Aye. Drum. Aye. Eugene. Aye. 
Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. Aye. aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. I vote aye. Lewis. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Oh, this looks like a lot. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. I vote aye. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. I vote aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Today's land use call up vote is 50 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. Today's land use call up is adopted. We'll now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson, and I would like to thank him for his incredible work in keeping this body together and organizing this unprecedented meeting today. Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, everyone. I am so proud of the work that we are doing together despite these physical challenges that we are facing right now. And I wanna thank uh, each council staff member who has put in countless hours to make this happen. This is an extraordinary stated meeting because it shows the council's commitment to public service. We were elected to serve our constituents in all 51 council districts. And our mission is to come together to create and pass legislation to help all New Yorkers in our diverse city. And that is needed now more than ever. This crisis has exposed so many of the structural, racial, and income inequities that plague New York City. Inequities in our healthcare system, in our governance, and in our schools. And it is my sincerest hope that through this tragedy, we will find opportunities to address these long-standing inequalities to build a better New York City. This is what we owe the more than 14,000 New Yorkers who have died from this terrible virus. And that work begins with this stated meeting today. I mentioned earlier the enormous losses of life that we have suffered as a city in the last month or so. And I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge two former council members who we lost in this pandemic. Arlene Stringer Cuevas, who represented Washington Heights and is the mother of city controller Scott Stringer, and Noach Deer, who represented Midwood, Borough Park, and Bensonhurst. We extend our condolences to their families. I also want to express condolences on the passing of Councilmember Salamanca's father, 
Rafael Salamanca Sr. died of coronavirus on April 3rd, and we are sending you, Rafael, and your family our love. In addition, I want to acknowledge that Council Members Torres, Barron, Levine, Constantinides, Valone, and Grudenchik, and I believe Ayala, have all been sickened by COVID-19. I am grateful that they are with us today and back to serving their constituents. As we do during each stated, I would also like to acknowledge those who have died from 9-11 related illnesses since our last meeting. Retired FDNY firefighter Steve Brickman died on April 12th of 9-11 related illnesses. He was 57 years old. Sergeant Sean Cameron, a retired member of the department, recently lost his battle with 9-11 related cancer on April 8th. He was 52 years old. I want us to take a moment of silence for former council members Arlene Stringer Cuevas, Council Member Noach Deer, Rafael Salamanca Sr., Firefighter Brickman, Sergeant Sean Cameron, as well as all of those who we have lost in our city and state and all over the world who have succumbed to this terrible virus. May we please now have a moment of silence. Thank you. Today is Earth Day, and it marks the 50th anniversary of the celebration of our planet and the fight for environmental protections. We are expecting, we are experiencing a terrible public health crisis right now, but we can't forget about the other work, the other important work we have to do to protect our planet. And New York City has some of the strongest policies in the country to protect the environment and the council will continue to push for bold change in this area in order to make sure our city and planet are strong for decades to come. This Friday, we usher in the holy month of Ramadan. I wanna wish all of those celebrating a very generous Ramadan. New York City's Muslim community has contributed so much to our cultural fabric. So let us all take this month to remember the contributions of Muslim New Yorkers and we weren't able to meet, but I hope everyone had a had a good Passover and a nice Easter uh, during this really important time in our city. And my last item before we get to our legislative agenda, I said it before, but I wanna wish a happy birthday to council member Ruben Diaz Sr. Okay, let's dive into our legislative agenda. As New York City's affordable housing crisis deepens, urgent action must be taken. The council's voting on a number of items that will preserve and establish affordable housing. I detailed most of those items just a few moments ago during the committee of the whole meeting. So in the, in the interest of time, I will not repeat those descriptions now. But in addition to voting to those items as a full council, we will also vote on several other measures and they are as follows. A rezoning at 271 Seabreeze Avenue to allow commercial use in Council Member Deutsch's district. A rezoning at 8118 13th Avenue in Councilor Brandon's district to legalize an existing office, the Queens Boulevard MIH text amendment in council members Holden and Van Bramer's districts to facilitate two new residential developments, including mandatory inclusionary housing, a health and hospitals lease at the Seaview campus for a residential substance program in, council, in minority leader Steve Matteo's district, the rescission of a landmark in Chair Salamanca's district and the landmark designations of Tin Pan Alley buildings at 47 through 55 West 28th Street in the district that I represent. Also an amendment to a previously approved tax exemption at Cooper Square MHA for property in Councilmember Rivera's district to allow community facility use for 327 affordable cooperative units in a community land trust. With that, I turn it back over to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will first recognize council members who signed up by email and then recognize members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Just wanna remind all members to 
raise your hand and please wait uh, for remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. And just to remind folks, this is to speak on the items that we are voting on uh, today. Madam Majority Leader. Yes. Council members Rodriguez, Amprey Samuel, and Van Bramer are the first to sign up. We will begin in the order that was just spoken of. Council member Rodriguez, your time is starting now. Yes, one is the one uh, uh, lead by Speaker Johnson and Council Member Kalina Rivera on the 75 mile street that we should be dedicated more for pe to pedestrian and cyclists. I would like for all, all of us to join into that effort. All the city has done it, New York City should do it too. This is an opportunity that as we are celebrating every day, we should show our commitment to dedicate more streets to pedestrian and cyclists. Second, I would like to also say thank you to Council Member Constantinide for allowing me to be a co prime in the resolution that we are calling to support Council Member Gennaro, I mean, Senator Gennaro and Senator Gustavo Rivera, who are looking to get the, the, the state legislator to, plot, to pass a bill and for the governor to sign that will provide free rent for three months to tenants and and tenants and a small business owner. Eh, hoy yo quiero uno pedirle de que todos yo, eh, apoyemos el paquete de leyes que estamos buscando apoyar a las personas que son víctimas de este coronavirus, entre ellos uno que busca dedicar espacio a la carretera en el día de hoy celebrando el Día de la Tierra para peatones y ciclistas y el otro que es una resolución que junto con los senadores Gustavo Rivera y Gennaro Estamos buscando de que la legislación de Albany pase una ley para proveer renta gratis a los inquilinos y pequeños negocios que están sufriendo por el coronavirus. Esperamos de que la legislación vote esta ley y que el gobernador la firme. Y le pido a que todos los concejales me apoyen, nos apoya Constantino y a mi persona en esta resolución que busca renta gratis a personas que son los inquilinos y dueños de negocio. Thank you. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, I just want to thank you, Councilman Rodriguez. I just want to remind members, we are discussing now, this is a, a discussion of the things that we are voting on uh, today for other items of bills that are being introduced. If folks could hold that until general discussion at the end of the meeting, as we always do uh, at the stated meeting of the council, that would be the best time to discuss bills that are being introduced or other items. I turn it back to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. And our next council member that was identified to speak. Thank council you, everyone. Thank council you. member, your time is starting now. Um, in the interest of time, I posted my statement to social media, and it was in reference to the vote that we just took during the Committee of the Whole. But thank you, everyone. Thank you. Next. Council member, your time is starting now. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to say that on this Earth Day, there are a few things that we can do as important as ending car culture uh, as we know it. Uh, so I wanted to particularly uh, praise uh, Speaker Johnson and Councilmember Rivera for their uh, bill uh, and for their uh, legislation calling for uh, 75 miles of car-free roads in the City during the crisis, but I also want to say that we should begin by closing the south outer roadway of the Queensboro Bridge, uh, which has been an immediate crisis affecting uh, so many people. Uh, we can do that, and we should do that uh, already, if not uh, before that. Uh, and I just also want to say I'm uh, calling in from the great borough of Queens, which might be one of the hardest hit places in the world. Um, but there's no place I'd rather be than in this borough with the greatest people on the face of the earth as we fight through this crisis uh, in Queens. Uh, and, and lastly, before I joined this call, I joined a Zoom funeral for Meyer Morris, who uh, was someone who helped raise me. Uh, the first Zoom funeral I've ever had to attend. 
Um, and uh, he was my constituent, but he also helped raise me, uh, the, the father of my childhood best friend. So uh, he's being buried as we speak. Uh, so I want to say on behalf of Meyer Bemores and all of those that we've lost, uh, you're in my heart forever. And I am forever grateful for the role that you played in my life. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Madam Majority Leader, the next three speakers are Council Members Miller, Cabrera, and Menchaca. Thank you. Council Member Miller, your time is starting now. Did we unmute Council Member Miller? I have restarted the clock whenever you're ready, Mr. Council Member Miller. Uh, hold on one second. I don't see. Councilman Miller, are you there? Let's go to the next council member and then we can go back to Councilman Miller. Oh, council okay. member Cabrera, followed by Menchaca, followed by Miller. Councilmember Menchaca, uh, council member Cabrera, your time is starting now. Yes, and, uh, for the interest of time, uh, I'm going to do a pass. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Council Member Menchaca. Council Member Menchaca, your time is starting now. Thank you all. And uh, I wanna just go a little bit further in my uh, statements around the land use items. Uh, there are 16 land use actions. Uh, I was able to connect with some of you about what those actions are doing in, in the districts uh, that you represent and really just offer support. I think what's really important here that the work that had happened before each of these land use actions were in pre-COVID times. And I, I just wanna to continue to ask that question. Uh, community boards made decisions in pre-COVID times and COVID has transformed everything. And so I wanna just keep mindful of that. Um, the work that our neighborhoods do every day to support that work um, at the neighborhood level is just so important. And our work to connect to that is great and important as well. Um, so you all know that ULERP is not my favorite thing in the world. Uh, I think I have a lot of issues with it in general. Um, so I prefer that we really spend time thinking about it and we want to think about it with you uh, on the ground. And so with that, um, uh, I vote aye. Thank you, Council Member Menchaca. Do we now have Council Member Miller available? He's not available yet. Okay, who's next? No other members have signed up for discussion of general orders. If Councilman Miller comes back, he can, of course, uh, make his statement when it is the time to vote during his voting time. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And so we will allow Councilmember Miller to speak um, at a later time. We will now move on to the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 617 and Reso 1290, Seaview Canvas. Couple of general orders. LU 618 through 622 and accompanying Resos, Tin Pan Alley. Couple of general orders. LU 623 and Reso 1296, landmark designation rescission, PS 31. Couple of general orders. LU 627, 271, Seabreeze Avenue. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 630 and Reso 1297, 13th Avenue rezoning. Coupled on general orders. LU 631, Queens Boulevard text amendment. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 640 and Reso 1298, Cooper Square. Couple to general orders. Report of the Committee of the Whole. Intro 1854, Downtown Flushing Transit Hub bid. Couple to general orders. Pre-considered LU 646 and Reso 1299, 1898 Harrison Avenue. Couple to general orders. Pre-considered LU 647 and Reso 1300, Grace Senior Housing. Couple to general orders. 
Are you considered LU 648 and Reso 1301, HP Morningside Heights? Couple of general orders. Are you considered LU 649 and Reso 1302, Turin House? Couple of general orders. Are you considered LU 650 and Reso 1303, Schreiber? Couple of general orders. Are you considered LU 651 and Reso 1304, East 169th Street? Couple of general orders. Pre-considered LU-652 and Reso 1305, Amron House. Couple of general orders. Pre-considered LU-653 and Reso 1306, Belmont Daniel. Couple of general orders. Pre-considered LU-654 and Reso 1307, Manhattan Avenue Apartments. Couple of general orders. LU-616 and Reso 1308, East 7th Street. Couple of general orders. LU 626 and Reso 1309, Gansford Street. Couple of general orders. LU 628 through 629, Grand Avenue and Pacific Street rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 637 through 639 and accompanying Reso's Rochester Sudan. Couple of general orders. LU 641 through 642, 52nd Street rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 643 through 644 and accompanying Rezzo's 90 Sand Street rezoning. Couple of general orders. We consider LU 655 and Rezzo 1315, 364 Avenue of the Americas rezoning. Couple of general orders. Pre-considered LU 656 and Reso 1316 River Crossing. Couple of general orders. Pre-considered LU 657 and Reso 1317 461 Alabama Avenue. Couple of general orders. On the general order calendar. LU 627 and Reso 1318 Sea Breeze Avenue. Couple of general orders. LU 631 and Reso 1319 Queens Boulevard. Couple of general orders. And at this time, I'm asking the clerk to please have a roll call vote on all of the items coupled on the general orders calendar, all the items that we just uh, went through. Mr. Clerk, I'm requesting a roll call vote on all of those items. Mr. Speaker. Adam. Yes, Excuse Mr. Parliamentarian. Before we begin our, our roll call vote, I believe Council Member Miller is now back on the line. We may want to give him an opportunity to speak before yes. voting. Yes, before we vote, I would like to recognize Councilmember Janique Miller to speak. Councilmember Miller, your time is starting now. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, could we, could we uh, uh, put that to uh, general discussion? Yes, sir. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so yes. very much. Thank you, Councilmember. I request a roll call vote on all the items on today's general order calendar, Mr. Clerk. Councilmember Adams. Aye on all. I'm Bree Samuel. I on all. Ayala. I on all. Baron. I vote I on all, and I do request to be added to the general discussion. Well, thank you. Borelli. I vote I on all. Brannon. Oh, I on all. Can we please Cabrera. Have the phones to vibrate, please? I, I on all, and please add me to the discussion list. Thank you. Tin. I on all. Cohen. I. Constantinidis. I on all, and please add me to the discussion list. Carnegie. Deutsch. Aye on all. Diaz. Aye on all. Drum. Aye. Eugene. Good aye. Gibson. Aye but aye. Jonai. I on all. Gordenchik. I on all. I responded for the uh, discussion list, so if I'm on it, good. If I'm not, please add me to it. Thank you.
Holden. I at all. Halos. I on all. King. I on all. Who? I on all. Kozlowitz. I on all. Lanceman. I. Lander. I on all. Levin. I on all. Levine. I vote I on all. Lewis. I on all. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. I on all. Miller. I. Moya. Aye. Bill? Yeah. Parkins. Hello? Somebody call me? Councilman Perkins, how do you vote? I vote Iowa all. Powers. I on all, and Steve Levin, your child is adorable. <laughs> Reynoso. I vote I on all. Richards. Councilmember Richards. I vote I. Thank you. Rivera. I. Rodriguez. I. Rose. I on all. Rosenthal. Know, and Council Member Levin, your child is wonderfully distracting. Thank you. <laughs> Salamanca. I know. Torres. Call Councilmember Torres again. I vote aye. Councilmember Torres, thank you. Hello? We got it, yes. Richard. Traeger. I vote aye, and please add me to general orders. <laughs> Ulrich. Uh, I, vote, I vote aye, and I hope everybody stays safe and healthy. Thanks, Eric. Valone. I on all. Van Bramer. I on all. Jaeger. I vote I on all with the exception of intro 1854 in which I abstain and I vote no on land use items 618 through and inclusive of 622 uh, consistent with my position that I stated before in the council that uh, landmarkings uh, without the owner's consent constitute an unconstitutional taking under the Fifth Amendment. Thank you. Matteo. I vote aye. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. And I ask the clerk to read the results on today's votes on the items on the general order calendar. The vote on all items for today's general order calendar is 50 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exception of introduction 1854, with a vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, one abstention, and land use items 618 through 622 and their accompanying resolutions with a vote of 49 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Land use calls remain unchanged. 
Thank you. The items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so we will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Madam Majority Leader. Yes. Council Members Miller, Adams, and Chin are the first to have signed up. Okay, we will begin with Council Member Miller. Council Member you. Miller, your time is starting now. Thank you, Majority Leader, and uh, it is so great to see all my colleagues out here uh, and, and out in the struggle continuing to work. As we know, COVID-19 has taken an awful toll and an immeasurable uh, toll on our city, state, and our country. Yet, despite this devastation and, the, and disarray that we have suffered, the one constant throughout this ordeal has been our city's workforce. Our municipal and uh, essential workers have once again stepped up. As I often say, uh, as the chair of civil service and, and, and labor, it is the men and women of our work for, city's workforce that give this city value. It is the reason why 65 million tourists, Amazon, Google, and so many others want to come to New York City. These brave uh, public and, and private employers, employees have braved this disease with remarkable courage to preserve our health, safety, and our way of life, and have done so through great perils and cost, personal costs of their own. Whether in times of prosperity or crisis, the inherent value of these workers has always been defined, has always defined our city's greatness. The majority of them are, are, are among the five million men and women of color who represent the council's New York City's Committee on Civil Service and Labor and the committee, uh, the, the council's Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus. The sad commentary is that for all that they have given to our city, that we have received far less in return. And, our conti and continue, they continue to bear the brunt, uh, the brunt of the COVID-19. 30 seconds. So once again, we emerge from under this, uh, once we emerge from this side of the pandemic, we must commit to addressing and resolving these racial and social economic disparities in the healthcare, transportation, financial, and educational infrastructures within the communities of color, which are not reflections of inner city poverty, but generational and structural racism that persists and government neglect. And so I'd like Time. to everyone, thank you, and uh, Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you, Council Member Miller. Next speaker. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Adams, your time will start now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and hello to all of my colleagues. I miss being in the same room with all of you. I am so pleased to introduce today uh, and be a part of the package that encompasses a small business COVID-19 bill, which I encourage my colleagues to sign on to. This bill would make threatening a commercial tenant based on their status as a COVID-19 impacted business or person a form of harassment punishable by a civil penalty of $10,000 to $50,000. Unfortunately, thousands of businesses in our city are suffering as they've been forced to close due to COVID-19. As availability of federal loans is limited, Many businesses are unable to pay their rent, and this leaves them vulnerable to harassment from landlords looking to find ways to collect or get the tenant to voluntarily abandon the property so they can find tenants willing and able to pay higher rents. The threat of harassment will particularly impact the city's small, independently owned and immigrant owned businesses, many of which were operating on thin margins and struggling to pay rent even before this crisis. Today, also, along with Councilmember Carnegie, we're introducing a deed fraud bill, which would require reporting on complaints received and investigations regarding recorded document fraud. Home ownership is a part of the American dream, but in times of financial uncertainty, homeowners can become targets for deed fraud. Unfortunately, state law prevents us from doing more rigorous checks before a deed 30 is- 30 seconds. Until there is a shift in the state law, the city council must demand updates and accountability from the office of the sheriff, 
on the outcomes and strategies of their investigations. I ask my colleagues to support both of these very important pieces of legislation. Thank you so much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Adams. Next speaker. Councilmember Chin, your time will start now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader. And glad to see all my colleagues. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank you, Speaker, uh, to Jason, all the central staff, and all my colleagues during, uh, for your support during this pandemic. And also to my team for all their hard work in serving our constituents. And to all the frontline workers, uh, the healthcare workers, the first responder, all the essential workers, delivery workers, grocery workers, they're working so hard um, to keep us healthy and strong. And that's why as city council, we have to do more to protect them, protect their family, and make sure they come out of this crisis also healthier and stronger. And finally, I wanted to give a big thank you to all the service provider, all the volunteers and donors who have stepped up during this crisis to deliver food and supplies um, to our healthcare workers, to our seniors, and to our families in need. And I pray that all of us will come out of this pandemic more united and stronger together. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Tuna. The next three speakers will be? The next three speakers are Council Members Gibson, Valone, followed by Lewis. <clears throat> Council Member Gibson, your time is starting now. Thank you so much and good afternoon to all of my colleagues. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Majority Leader. And every one of you, um, I join with all of you in first and foremost expressing our thoughts and prayers and condolences to everyone across our city who has lost a loved one, a relative, a family member, a neighbor to this COVID-19 pandemic. Those that remain in the hospital that are struggling to survive, we pray for healing. Um, I am reminded that this too shall pass. And we are New Yorkers, we're tough, we're resilient. And I know we will get through this, we will survive, we will thrive, and we will be stronger than ever. It has been overwhelming, emotionally draining for all of us as we continue to do this work. We take care of our families, our children, we serve our districts. There's so much going on, there's a lot of information that's being shared, the coordination of services. But I join with all of you in saluting every first responder, essential worker, frontline worker, all of our public servants, men and women that go to work every day to serve the public and risk their lives to protect us and save New Yorkers. I'm reminded that many of our public servants are hardworking men and women of color, predominantly women and women of color, and we salute you every day for everything you're doing. The cafeteria workers at our schools, the crossing guards, small businesses, grocery workers, everyone, we thank you. I think as we move forward and we learn about some of the deficiencies and gaps in services and challenges that we face, I am reminded that a borough like mine of the Bronx has had a higher rate of hospitalization and deaths because of underlying health disparities. So I look forward to working with all of you, my colleagues, as we not only address a COVID post world, but also some of the challenges we faced prior to COVID. Again, my prayers to everyone. I thank you colleagues for introducing a comprehensive package today, and I look forward to our continued work. God bless us all. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. We will now move to Council Member Vallone. Council Member Vallone, your time is starting now. First off, I wanna thank our speaker, Corey Jans Johnson and his staff for really putting this unprecedented hearing together and giving us a chance to see our fellow colleagues. Thank you, Corey, for all of that and being our rock for all of us. To myself and the fellow council members who have been uh, struck with this unbelievable disease, um, the rest of you have really given us the, the prayers and the health and the love that we needed for our families to get through these very scary times. And it really humanized what every person had to do during this crisis from the moment you decided you needed to get help, where to get help, and the realization of how dependent we were and are on our first line workers, our responders, our healthcare workers, our delivery workers, 
my life is completely dependent on everyone who has helped us. So I wanted to say thank you for my family and for everyone who has really just from dropped things to the door to sent us messages. Uh, my heart is to everyone who is suffering and has lost someone. Um, today, there is so much uh, that we need to thank, and I just wanted to congratulate our fellow members for all the pieces of legislation that are in there today, and those who signed on to our resolution calling on the federal government to not continue to forget our co-ops and condos. It's really our last passage of affordable housing, and it's not in any of the relief packages of the PPP loans or the CARE Act. So we're asking um, the fellow council members to join on it, almost happy one now. So 30 seconds. On financing will include co-ops and condos. That's the reso that's on today. And my only caveat for the day would be that we tread lightly when we're talking about so many miles of our streets. Um, yes, Manhattan is different than the rest of the boroughs and we need to have some space. But what we do, we do temporarily and that we look to full hearings to talk about impacts from everyone if we were to do anything beyond uh, temporary emergency acts because we are dependent on those very streets, all of us, not just certain groups. Uh, and with that, Time. I want to say thank you. God bless everyone. Thank you so much and so glad to see you in good health. Uh, Councilmember Lewis. Councilmember Lewis, your time will start now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very, very grateful to see everyone um, and to see everyone well, happy, and healthy. Uh, I want to thank all of our first responders and everyone that's just been doing a great work on the grounds um, in all of our districts and all of our communities. I want to thank you, um, Speaker Corey Johnson, for your leadership. And I want to thank the Legislative Division for helping me push these two pieces of legislation forward. Um, in the interest of time, I'll be really quick. Um, Today I'll be introducing two pieces, uh, intro 1929, which would create a public alert system to be used in missing persons cases where the person is believed to be in imminent danger, and intro 1928, which would require the NYPD to compile, send, and post a yearly missing persons report disaggregated by race, age, gender, police precinct, person, uh, sorry, uh, percent of cases solved and proportion of which cases involved of human trafficking. Um, I urge my colleagues to sign on to 1928 and 1929. These two public safety bills can help increase awareness and save more lives. And I also want to thank Councilmember Joe and I for allowing me to co-prime on 1921. I don't know if he's speaking about it today, but it's a very good bill and I want to encourage everyone to sign on. And thank you so much, Majority Leader. Madam Majority Leader, the next three members who have signed up are Gridenchik, Rivera, and Powers. Councilmember Gridenchik, your time will start now. Thank you very much. Um, I want to thank everybody for uh, their personal concern for myself and my family. Um, this disease is nothing to be trifled with, as uh, many of us have found out, so thank you. I want to thank the speaker and the entire council team for putting this together today. Um, it's critical that government function in New York City, and we have shown that that is possible uh, despite what we're going through. I want to thank my own team, led by my chief of staff, Ari Gershman, uh, for keeping up and uh, helping out uh, many, many people in my district and elsewhere um, when I was flat on my back. Um, I want to thank um, our first responders and everybody um, who is fighting this terrible disaster. Um, I know that we have lost uh, over 10,000 New Yorkers, many of them city workers who have given their lives in performance of their duty and our thoughts and our prayers are with them and their families at this time. I want to echo the concerns of my colleague and my dear friend, uh, Paul Vallone, and we must remember that New York City is spreads out over 300 square miles. Uh, traveling in my district uh, is very difficult by mass transit, even more so these days. Uh, I delivered food today on behalf of Common Point um, uh, in Eastern Queens. None of the people that I delivered to today would be able to get around without a car. Um, some of them lived almost a mile from the nearest grocery store. So uh, it's a very large city. Uh, and we have seconds. to remember that. Thank you. Um, in sum, uh, growing up, when I was a little boy, we used to drive along the Cross Bronx Expressway visiting family and vast stretches of our city were burned out in the early 70s. New York City came back because we worked hard and we were smart. And we will get over this, I assure you. Uh, New York City is always gonna be a place where people are gonna wanna come 
to live, to work, to raise their families, and to retire as well. So let's stay, keep Time. our foot on the accelerator. Thank you very much. Madam Majority Leader, Council Members Rivera, Powers, and Levine. Council Member Rivera. Council Member Rivera, your time will start now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you to everyone out there who made this happen, especially the staff and to all the first responders and, and workers who are keeping us safe, healthy, and comfortable. I wanna just highlight two bills I'm introducing today. First, legislation that would temporarily require the city to open approximately 75 miles of city streets to pedestrians and cyclists during the COVID-19 pandemic in order to provide New Yorkers with more room for social distancing. Cities across the country from Boston to Oakland have taken similar measures, but if passed, we would be the first legislative body to pursue an innovative program such as this. We have seen just this week in reports from urban planners that almost all of our city sidewalks are not safe for social distancing. Our open streets bill will increase space for essential workers to commute safely. It will supplement our already crowded parks, which will only become more cramped this summer. And it will bring equity to communities of color that for decades have lacked the open spaces that we are fortunate to have in other neighborhoods. As the chair of the committee on hospitals, I encourage all of you, my colleagues in the council, to support the passage of this bill as quickly as possible in order to prevent further infections and further strain on our heroic hospitals and their staff. An open streets program, just like washing hands and face coverings, will save lives, plain and simple. The speaker and I are also introducing legislation as part of the council's coronavirus relief package, which will temporarily suspend personal liability for seconds and related rental agreements of businesses impacted by COVID-19. This will ensure city business owners don't face the loss of their businesses and personal financial ruin or bankruptcy as a result of this state of emergency. These businesses are closing and losing weeks of income through no fault of their own and allowing small business owners to keep their spaces will be integral to the city's ability to recover after the virus. I hope you will join us in co-sponsoring this bills and this coronavirus relief package before us today. Time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Council Member Rivera. Now we'll hear from Council Member Powers. Thank you. Thank Council you. Member Powers, your time will start now. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. And it's good to see everybody again, even in a virtual setting. I do miss everybody here. And thank you for all the good work you're all doing. And wanted to offer some condolences and some prayers today for those who, uh, unfortunately, we've lost uh, along the way in this difficult moment. And I wanted to offer my deepest condolences to our colleague, Rafael Salamanca, for the passing of his father, uh, as well as to controller Scott Stringer for the passing of his mother, and also remember the lives of many who couldn't be here, including uh, Councilmember Noak Deer, who I know passed uh, last week, many members of the NYPD, many members of the Corrections Department, uh, and two folks in city custody who have passed away, and countless many more. Um, they've been devastating to our city, and of course to their families as well. And I also wanted to send my thoughts and prayers to the family of uh, NYPD Transportation Chair, uh, Transportation Chief, rather, William Morris, who I know his family is struggling and he's struggling as well today. Um, we have so much work to do ahead of us to honor the lives of those who have been lost, but also to save lives and to protect New Yorkers' health and prosperity going forward. And the health is our top priority. We all must uh, follow official guidance. But as we think past the stages, uh, the past this stage of the COVID crisis, that means making tough decisions in our city budget. It means making uh, tough decisions about what our priorities will be, and but it means being proactive and helping those. Um, for me, that's meant helping. Thirty seconds. Yep, helping renters immediately, providing rental assistance, finding creative ways to help people be able to pay the next month's rent. It means that we have to advocate for our small businesses who really need our help, particularly those in the hospitality industry right now who are being hit the hardest. And it means we need to do more in our city jails where there have been the highest rate of infections. We've lost officers and uh, we have people that are incarcerated. So I know we have a lot of work to do. I'll stop there, see my time's up. But I wanna thank everybody for their continued leadership here. And I know that we'll be working together in the weeks ahead to make sure New York is okay. a <laughs> very difficult time. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll hear now from Council Member Levine. Council Member thank Levine, you, Madam, your time leader. is starting now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for your leadership, which has been outstanding throughout this crisis. Thanks to all 
my colleagues for what you're doing in your district and all around the, all around the city. It's really quite inspiring. As all of you know, we are about to build an entirely new public health system to prepare us for the next phase of this virus and our fight against it. Uh, we are gonna have to build a system of mass testing and contact tracing, quarantining, hoteling, isolating, transporting patients, telemedicine, IT. It's almost the equivalent of starting an entirely new city agency. Um, as big as ACS, maybe FDNY, we've never done anything like this in city history. Thousands of employees. Um, it's going to be an extraordinarily challenging undertaking, but it's what we need to do to restart our economy and to get back to something remotely like normal. This is going to touch every one of our districts, uh, especially communities of color, which have been disproportionately hard hit in this crisis. And every one of us needs to have a role in shaping this and delivering it. Our communities need to be engaged in, in, engaged in designing this, this uh, new public health system. Uh, CBOs need to be engaged in delivering these services. Um, so my, my call to all of you is let's work together on this to make sure that the failures of the early stage in this crisis nationally are not repeated here in New York City when we have one more seconds. shot at containing this horrible virus. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Levine, and so glad to see you as well as your family doing better. Next three speakers. Madam Majority Leader, the next three speakers are Council Members Menchaca, King, and Eugene. Council Member Menchaca. Council Member Menchaca, your time will start now. Hi, colleagues, and hi again. Um, the coronavirus continues to be uh, incredibly impactful, widespread across the economic. We just heard about the health stuff uh, from uh, Council Member Levine. And immigrant New Yorkers, particularly those who are undocumented, they have uh, incredible vulnerability in this conversation. And yet these undocumented workers and immigrant families are largely excluded from state programs like unemployment insurance and the federal relief cash payments that are, and were supposed to help workers who lost their jobs or got their hours cut. And so my question to us here and to everyone at home, what will the state and the city do to help our immigrant friends and families and neighbors and colleagues? And so the governor and the mayor have already said that they're not interested in using government funding for this, um, but I'm sure that they know that the undocumented immigrant communities contribute $40 billion a year to New York State's gross domestic product, it's according to the Fiscal Policy Institute report. And further, they pay more than a billion dollars a year in state and local taxes. So again, I, I kinda ask, what are we gonna do? And where are we going to, what are we gonna do as a council? Meanwhile, uh, the ISIS, ICE is still uh, terrorizing our communities. They're holding people, including pregnant women in detention facilities, as we are um, uh, told to stay at home and, and uh, practice social distancing. So with all this, I just wanna keep asking ourselves, what are we gonna do? Um, and let us not um, forget that democracy, uh, we cannot assume democracy, uh, even in this time, and that the democracy is about participation. And I'm hoping that everyone stays engaged, re-engages, whether you're a community board member, a student, an immigrant, a day laborer, no matter what language you speak or sexual orientation or gender expression, or whatever, you need your help Time's up. to maintain this the democracy. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Council Member Manchaka. Now we'll hear from Council Member King. Council Member you, King, leader. your time is starting now. Thank you, Majority Leader and Speaker. Thank you for leading today's conversation and your leadership through all this craziness that we're trying to manage. I just want to offer prayers to all the families who are suffering through this pandemic. More importantly, to all of my colleagues, all of us here who are dealing with this in our neighborhoods and in our hearts and in our households and outside of our households and praying for strength and, and health, health for everyone. Um, I just want to add uh, my voice to uh, Peter Vallone. I want to, I mean, Paul Vallone, I want to thank you for allowing me to um, be a close prime with you with the resolution, making sure that our condos and our co-ops are not forgotten in this, uh, all these fiscal stimuluses that are coming down and making sure that we take care of those residents. Co-op City, which is the largest knock in this country, they're suffering right now. So even as we're talking about a COVID package that will make sure essential workers get raises, they're gonna have challenges meeting those financial burdens. So I want us to continue to have these conversations and make sure that we can protect everybody, small businesses, big businesses, housing and so forth. But I also wanna lend my voice, Debbie Rose and I, Council Member Royce, 
Well, the challenge of making sure that summer youth this summer have something to do. Uh, we know that uh, the speaker, as you mentioned, the conversation has been about ending it. I'm asking us, maybe we can call on the federal government to do a uh, summer youth stimulus package and making sure children are funded uh, and they're doing something during the summer, whether it's a school project or something to keep them engaged because of the fiscal responsibilities they have to their homes. I'm asking if we can look at something like that and continue that conversation with our youth. And finally, I want to talk about our small businesses, not only just small businesses, but but our black and brown small businesses, for some reason, sometimes get left out of the pot, pot when it comes to getting that funding to our neighborhood, whether it's capacity or figuring out the rules. How do we streamline it that this, this billions of dollars that's come down, hits our neighborhoods and hits them, hits them in real time. So with that one said, I wanna wish everyone a happy Ramadan, Councilman Medias, happy birthday and blessings and peace to everybody. And thank you again for your leadership. God bless us all. Thank you so much, Councilmember King, followed by Councilmember Eugene. Thank you very much, Madam uh, Majority Leader. Councilmember Eugene, your time will start now. Thank you, uh, Madam uh, Majority Leaders. Uh, we all know that uh, we are facing, as a community, as a society, we are, we are facing a horrible, horrible tragedy, the COVID-19 pandemic that has claimed the life of so many people, that has caused so many pain and suffering in our society, and also that has shut down our economy, our school, our churches, and, you know, that have affected us for so many part of our life. But we can say that the part of the devastation is because we were not ready for these type of viruses, these type of crisis. Even after SARS virus epidemic in 2002, in MERS in 2012, we were still not ready. And we put so much stress and challenges on our medical staff, doctors and nurses, and what happened, the people who have been suffering from critical disease before, they couldn't even receive the critical care that they need. That the reason why I, I have introduced two pieces of res, uh, resolution, two pieces of legislation, resolution 637 and 638, asking that the city and the city and the federal government create, stand alone, medical centers and hospital to handle crises 30 seconds. by infectious disease, epidemic and pandemic, and to create also a permanent commission to study the effect of the previous crisis, health crisis on the society in order for us to be prepared. And this commission will be staffed by medical staff, elected officials and experts in medicine and biology to do research on the impact of the previous uh, medical tragedy. And Time's if up. when people are infected by virus like uh, uh, COVID-19, so pathogenic, we are going to expose the medical staff, doctors, nurses, and the previous patients. I'm Thank asking you, all my colleagues to support this uh, two legislation. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for your important work. I'd like to have the next three speakers. Madam Majority Leader, with your permission, I'll read the full list. There have been a number of council members who have been raising their hand, and this okay. way they'll know that they've been recognized. Fair. The remaining list is council members Rodriguez, Kalos, Barron, Borelli, Constantinides, Traeger, Lander, Reynoso, Van Bramer, Jaeger, Levin, and Cabrera. The next three up are Rodriguez, Kalos, and Barron. Thank you. Councilmember Rodriguez. Councilmember Rodriguez, your time will start now. Thank you. And I think that most of you guys know, you know, what I'm gonna say, but for all New Yorkers, it's sad to be in 2020 you know, showing the face of the city of New York that we have reclaiming that we have the best hope system in the whole nation. And yes, when we see the C code where people have access to the best health services are those C code or the wealthy New Yorkers. When you look at the numbers and the faces of people dying, you know, God's sake, is the same systematic poverty that we have 
in the forest area. You can call it in any elected official C code. I, I can tell you like Congressman Serrano, this is, and Serrano is like the first one poorest in the nation. Congressman Espaillat district is the 11 one poorest in the nation. And you look at the faces of the Latinos and the black and the Asian, and yes, coronavirus doesn't discriminate. Anyone can get it and we feel, you know, we really have a, our prayer for anyone, the 8.6 million New Yorkers, but there's faces of the poorest one. And the question is, what can we do? We have failed. The city has failed. We have built a city of the poor and the rich. And until we address that situation, we will be in the same place 10, 20 years from now. Nosotros, la ciudad, le hemos fallado a los más pobres, a los latinos, a los negros, a los asiáticos. And I call on my progressive New Yorkers, stand up. We need to do better. We can do better. We can save life. And lastly, I would like to show our, all our support to the responders who they are putting their life to save other Time's people's up. life. Madam Majority Leader, Council Members Kalos, Barron, and Borelli. I'm waiting for the Sergeant at Arms. Has to be recognized by Majority Leader. Council Member Kalos, you're recognized to begin. Time will start now. I'm proud of the work that the council continues to do as the legislative body in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, I'm introducing two bills, one to help essential workers now and one looking ahead in hopes of bringing systemic change and improving access for underrepresented communities to our city's best schools. And you may hear uh, my daughter in the background as all of us adjust to the new normal. Uh, first introduction, 1923, that I authored with Speaker Corey Johnson and Council Member Lander to provide just cause protections to all essential workers, from those in healthcare to those in our grocery markets or making deliveries as we continue to thank and praise all these workers, including cheering them nightly. Many have faced retaliation for speaking out against unsafe conditions and demanding protective equipment to keep them safe in order to better keep us safe. Under this legislation, essential workers will be protected from retaliation or termination without just cause. Second introduction 1924 that I authored with public advocate Williams and council members Brandon and Cornegy aims to increase access to specialized high schools in our city where black and Latino students have lost seats over the last two decades. The legislation would finally seat every student for the specialized high school uh, admissions test, the SHSAT, unless they opted out. Universal test preparation would also be available. The education equity campaign provided a free seven week course to nearly 200 students of color with results that prove this intervention combined with seating every student would improve access. If you're watching online or 30 seconds and you need help during this pandemic, please out, reach out and we will be there for you to help. I want to thank the council staff for working even harder from home. My staff, Jeff Baker, Yuzat Chowdhury, Malcolm Buterhorn and countless others. Thank you. Thank you. I believe we lost uh, the majority leader, uh, Lance, who's next. Council members Barron, Borelli, and Constantinidis. Council member Barron. Council member Barron, your time will start now. Thank you. It's good to see all of my colleagues. You're looking well. Glad to see you. I want to thank the speaker and all of those who work to make this a reality. This is my first big Zoom conference, and I'm so glad that we're doing something that's so significant. I also want to add my prayers and condolences to all who have been uh, impacted by this, whether you were diagnosed with it or you had someone else was diagnosed. As you may know, Charles and I did have it. We have recovered, although we have not been in the house in about 45 days, we're still staying in. And we wanna thank all who have been supportive of us. Um, and I also want to mention Minister Abdul Hafiz Muhammad who passed and Father Lawrence Lucas who passed also. Uh, this COVID is, Colorblind, yes, but the systems that operate in this city and in this nation are not colorblind. And the inherent racial inequities that are manifested in our health disparities, in our underfunding through the educational system, through the low family wealth that exists, 
through the businesses that are so greatly impacted, and through the digital divide that we see are results of the systemic, historic racism on which this country has been founded. And we hear people talking about that, and we want to make sure that when we come through this, we don't have a worse situation in the aftermath, such as what we saw in Katrina. So I want to encourage everyone to be able to be mindful of making sure that we come out at the other end, we're at a more equitable place. And I want to encourage you to support the Higher Education Committee as we appeal for CUNY to freeze tuition and to maintain the ASAP program, which is nationally recognized, and to implement the food program, which the speaker had so graciously started, and to continue the big program, because our children are going to be devastated when they come back to school in September. Thank you. Thank you, Inez. I'm glad you and Charles are better. Yes, we're better. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Borelli. Oh, go, sorry, the majority leader is back. Thank you, Councilmember Borelli. Councilmember Borelli, your time will start now. Uh, thank you. I think there was a misunderstanding. Uh, I didn't uh, uh, put myself in to speak, but while I have the conch, I just want to say uh, that I hope the council continues to take a very direct and deliberate action in supporting line of duty death benefits for all essential workers uh, whom we had asked to go to work during this crisis. The MTA took a very positive step in being the first sort of organization to guarantee these for their members. Uh, but there are a lot of, um, you know, correction employees, teachers, nurses, uh, uh, and all sorts of people, EMTs. There were two more EMTs that died in the last 24 hours. So please, let's take some definitive steps towards uh, easing the mental burden uh, that, that potentially leaving one's family destitute uh, must be uh, on the shoulders of some of our essential workers. Thank you. I agree, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Costa Costantinides. Councilmember Costantinides, your time starts now. First, I just want to thank uh, all of my colleagues for all the good wishes to my family and, uh, and to really thank all of the frontline uh, workers, essential workers, healthcare workers that have been doing an amazing job under unbelievable circumstances every single day. Uh, you know, this is Earth Day today, as the speaker talked about. And, you know, last year we passed some very big legislation. And it wasn't about the goals. It's about what it, those goals mean. We're seeing the impacts of environmental racism and pollution in our environmental justice communities every single day, exasperated. The asthma rates are the breeding ground for COVID, and we're losing lives in those communities. We need to act more boldly. We need to continue to move our agenda forward. We need, to, we need to move our city forward in a way that protects our environmental justice communities in the long haul because it is literally life and death. Those communities are the ones that are most impacted. They are the ones that have been bearing the brunt of uh, COVID and we must continue to do more. So I, I, I agree with the speaker as he talked about in his opening about needing to double down on our efforts around environmental justice, around environmental work, and ensuring the health seconds. of New Yorkers in the long term. And lastly, I'm glad to work with Councilmember Rodriguez in introducing the resolution in support of Senator Gennaris' bill to cancel rent in this critical time. We need to make sure that with all of this that's going on, that no one is losing their homes, no one is being put into debt, and we need to protect all of our New Yorkers. Uh, from the consequences of what is going on. Thank you. Thank you so much, and so glad to see you doing better. Uh, Councilmember Traeger. Councilmember Traeger, your time will start now. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you to the speaker, uh, to the staff, to all my colleagues. Uh, I extend best uh, wishes and speedy recoveries to all of us uh, and all of our communities that have been greatly impacted. And thank you to our staff, both Central and all of our member office staff who have literally signed thousands of seniors, seniors up for deliveries, meals, uh, for helping with unemployment insurance. Uh, our staff is doing amazing work. I want to thank them all and thank you to the speaker staff for keeping democracy going uh, in this crisis. Of course, I want to extend our heartfelt appreciation and thanks to our healthcare heroes, our emergency first responders. And I want to note for the record 
that there are hospital executives uh, hiding out in, in mansions in Florida or in the Hamptons while EMTs in New York City who are dying from their lives on the line still making $35,000 a year seeing great pay disparity. We must address that once and for all. And I wanna just clarify something for the record. We keep hearing city, state, federal leaders keep referring to schools as being closed. I wanna clarify that the work of our educators continue. I speak not just as an education chair, but as a former public school teacher who speaks to my colleagues. It would take me a long time to map curriculum for the year ahead. The work of our educators has been nothing short of extraordinary. To, to those educators who have lost colleagues, who are grieving in their families seconds. and their school communities, we see you. The fact that our educators have put together curriculum maps online in this new era of remote learning in under a week or two weeks, we see you. The fact that you're still teaching and educating while taking care of your own families and grieving losses, we see you. The fact that you're doing wellness calls to your students, checking in on, on their wellness at home, we see you. The fact that educators are raising money from their own pockets to feed their kids, up. to feed their students, and to buy them clothes, we see you. And I hope my colleagues, we see them and we hear them in the budget process. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for your time. Thank you, Council Member Traeger, and thank you for your passion and your persistence. I'd now like to call on Council Member Lander, followed by Council Member Van Bramer. Council Member Lander, your time is starting now. Thank you, Majority Leader, and thank you, Speaker Johnson. A big thanks to the staff who made this possible, and I also want to echo to my own staff who are just working extraordinarily hard. Colleagues, it is unbelievably powerful to be with you right now. These are some of the darkest times that we will live through, some of the darkest times of any generation, and we're seeing extraordinary pain and anguish in the families who are suffering, in the workers who have to be out there, in people who have lost their jobs or afraid of losing their homes. But we are also seeing some incredible courage, some of the most courageous action we've ever seen obviously in our emergency rooms and in our hospitals, but by so many of our essential workers as well. And I'm glad that we are back in business today trying to do our part inspired by those workers to honor it and to make sure we live up to what we're saying. So I know that many of you like me love going out at 7 p.m. every night and banging pots and pans and screaming as loudly as we can to say thank you to the people who are stocking the shelves in our grocery stores, delivering food and supplies, driving people to work and appointments, and caring for sick New Yorkers in our hospitals and our nursing homes. But let's remember, so many of those people are low-income New Yorkers. They're working in low-wage jobs. They're women. They're people of color. And we might be banging pots and pans, but we haven't done enough to make sure that they've got the pay and the sick leave and the workplace protections and the dignity that they so deeply deserve. 30 seconds. So I'm proud today, along with the speaker, Councilmember Kalos and Councilmember Cumbo, to be introducing the New York City Essential Worker Bill of Rights, which will go beyond cheering to make sure that our gig workers have paid sick leave, that workers can't be fired for speaking out about health and safety conditions and making sure people get some extra pay if they are working for large companies and having the courage to go out and work in this period of time. It's a powerful piece of legis uh, uh, package of legislation. I really hope you'll join Time's us. Time's up. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Lander. And I stand corrected. We have Councilmember Reynoso, followed by Councilmember Van Bramer, and then followed by Councilmember Cabrera. Councilmember Reynoso, your time starts now. Thank you. Um, I also want to make sure that I thank the uh, Sergeant at Arms for all the work they're doing and participating in uh, keeping everything in order. To Lance, um, we're big process geeks, so love the parliamentarian role. Um, and again, to all the staff, including my staff, that is working hard during this, uh, this pandemic. Um, I wanna make sure that I state, uh, while this virus uh, sees us all the same, the inequities in our communities um, have made it very clear that there are certain types of groups of people um, and folks of socioeconomic status that are being treated um, uh, unfairly or inequitably in our system. And I think uh, it's going to be extremely important moving forward that business is not done as usual. Uh, we are able to start riding the ship of inequity after this crisis. And I hope that uh, many of our colleagues start uh, drawing a line as to how exactly we're going to do that. 
it is very clear that our neighborhoods of South Bronx, North Brooklyn, and Southeast Queens have the highest rates of asthma in all of the city. And it is no, uh, and because of that, it is why they're dying at a higher rate than anywhere else in the city. Um, so I think it's very important that we start having these conversations and not concede or compromise in making sure we drive ourselves out of um, <clears throat> this equitable, uh, this inequity. Uh, I also know that the budget is something we're talking about right now. There are some agencies like seconds. NYPD that has not taken the st same steps of, as other agencies like the Department of Education when it comes to cuts that need to happen so that we could start talking about equity again. And then we also have um, uh, initiatives like Thrive that um, don't necessarily do the job that we thought they should be doing that have also not taken enough cuts. So we should really have a conversation about where these cuts are coming from and stop uh, allowing for the initiatives that are supposed to bring about equity um, to continue to get cut. Time's up. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Van Bramer. Council thank you very much. Van Bramer, your time will start now. Thank you. I, I wanna thank uh, the speaker and the entire staff for making this possible. Uh, I too wanna to begin by thanking the members of my staff who have been working uh, nonstop uh, at home since this all began. Uh, I also want to recognize uh, the public housing residents, uh, the good folks of Queensbridge, Ravenswood, Woodside Houses, Astoria Houses. Um, uh, just now we're hearing all of these plans from the governor and the mayor to talk about how we're going to help people in public housing, but that's about eight weeks later than we should have had uh, a plan to talk about how we were going to help folks in public housing. Um, get through this crisis. Um, I also want to talk about the fact that uh, when we talk about essential workers, and I'm proud of the work this council is doing in expanding the definition, but uh, I was raised by a woman who worked in a supermarket, uh, and my stepfather was a janitor who cleaned uh, the floors and the bathrooms at junior high school 10 in Astoria. Uh, grocery store workers and janitors are essential workers, and so many of them have put their lives on the line during this crisis. Uh, every time I go to a supermarket, uh, I thank profusely uh, the men and women who are working there, risking their lives so that other people can eat. Um, and I just want to say again, thank you to all of the first responders, all of the people who gather together. 30 and seconds. I'm wearing this tie. As you can see, I mentioned Meyer Morris, uh, who helped raise me. He was a huge Met fan. Uh, and this tie I wore in his honor. It is a red and blue tie. It is the colors of the Mets. And finally, I want to recognize, because we will rename the street for Tarla McNeil, who was a great uh, Irish LGBT activist uh, uh, who died of COVID-19. And I want to recognize him. There'll be plenty more time to talk about his legacy going forward. But thank I'm you up. to him as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. We will now hear from council members. And I, and I also am making a correction. Jaeger, Levin, and then Cabrera. Council member, your time will start now. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I, I also want to uh, add my thanks, as been mentioned before on this floor, uh, to uh, the members of the staff of the city council, particularly Jason, uh, members of the general council team, and the folks who worked very hard to uh, get this meeting off and to get our operations complete. And I also want to thank my own staff uh, who have been uh, working incredibly hard to keep our office operational um, and to uh, uh, keep serving the people who sent me to the city council. Um, I, I think I would be remiss if I don't take a few seconds at least to honor um, in more time uh, than I have available, he deserves, uh, my predecessor, Councilman Noah Dier, Justice of the Supreme Court, um, who was taken at the prime of his life, uh, somebody who had given so much to his community uh, somebody who was a friend of mine um, and a friend of so many and who was a leader in our body for 18 years, uh, was elected to the city council when I was still in my single digits and I've known him practically my entire life. And it was a shocking and tremendous loss, um, which is not to belittle the losses that all communities in this city have seen. Uh, we have all lost so many. Uh, my grandmother uh, passed away uh, last week, Monday. Uh, the Novominska Rebbe, who is, was a giant in Torah Jewry, who gave so much of his life to help build our community here in America, um, was taken from us 
prior to his time in a tragic way. 30 seconds. Uh, my own Rosh Yeshiva of Ger, of David Olevsky. And of course, this needs to be mentioned, uh, the dozens and dozens of names that I know, uh, people who were able to escape the brutality of Hitler and the Nazis and who were survivors of the Holocaust and whose numbers I touched on their arms who have lost their lives in the last several days and weeks. And I honor their memory and I will continue doing that. Thank you, Mr. Madam President. Thank you, Council Member Yeager. And we will now hear from Council Member Levin and then Cabrera. Council Member Levin, you your time will start now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I just want to echo my colleague's sentiments um, uh, in extending our condolences to everybody that has lost a loved one, um, everybody who has um, uh, who has gone through um, a painful illness. Um, this has been um, one of the darkest hours uh, that our city has ever known. Um, and uh, it is devastating and heartbreaking uh, for all of us. And we extend our uh, love to, to everybody in New York City who is suffering today. Um, we want to acknowledge all of the tremendous work that uh, our healthcare workers, uh, our first responders, uh, everybody that's going to work in uh, every essential capacity, grocery stores, pharmacies, um, delivery workers, um, people at working at an auto body shop or um, a tire changing place, uh, everybody that's, that's doing a tremendous amount of putting themselves out on the line um, uh, in the service of your fellow New Yorker, um, we express our gratitude. Um, Colleagues, I, I uh, am introducing a piece of legislation today as well, um, intro 1927, which would extend to individuals in shelter, uh, in a congregate setting, or in an uh, unsheltered environment, um, the right to a hotel room during this crisis. The fact of the matter is there are still uh, thousands upon thousands of New Yorkers who are in congregate shelters um, is a very dangerous and risky place to be, um, and we owe it to them Time's up. Uh, to be able to give them um, an appropriate setting uh, so that we can um, avoid an outbreak um, on our watch in our shelter system. So I ask uh, my colleagues to sign on to intro 1927. Thank you. Thank you, and Council Member Cabrera. Thank Council you so Member much. Cabrera, your time will start now. Thank you so much, and I can see uh, the time clock, so... Uh, no need for the reminder of 30 seconds, but I want to take, I give a, uh, take a moment to thank the speaker, uh, to all my colleagues uh, very early on. As, as you know, my son came down uh, with coronavirus. Um, probably, I was probably the first elected official to have a family member go through this. I had all kinds of uh, feelings. I was scared, I was uh, upset. I was, um, I, I think I felt all the feelings uh, that a father could feel. And then my daughter came down with it, their spouses, their, my grandchildren. And, uh, and the reason I'm mentioning uh, this right now, I don't want us to go through what we could have done before. We could have done the quarantine before. We, we should have done the testing, the appropriate testing, and we were not prepared. And so we're talking about inequities, uh, inequities right now. Uh, let me just say that I, I, I'm hopeful that we're not waiting until this is over uh, for the inequities to be taken care of. We need to address them now. Now that we're gonna have antibody tests, they're already started. They should be uh, in our, uh, in the deepest, hardest hit, uh, area should take should, should be taking place in areas that was most affected the help needs to come now this recession is going to last uh it's not going to be all gone in, in a year uh, it's going to take years for us to recover so we need to be wise we need to uh appropriate all the funding that we need and we need to do it uh, now as we go through this budget and to be able uh to stand proud 
in June to make sure that we have uh, a good budget for all. Thank you so much. Thank you, and Council Member Rose. Council Member Rose, your time will start now. Thank you. Um, like all of my colleagues, I want to say thank you to the speaker, our colleagues in government for all of their efforts on behalf of, of the citizens of New York City. But I want to thank more especially the first responders and the essential workers for all that they have done and their selfless efforts to keep all of us safe and healthy. Um, you know, there were some inequities in terms of treatment um, within the categories of first responders and essential workers. And I hope that we are going to make sure that that doesn't happen, that the workers who are working in the nursing homes and the group homes um, and in the shelters are equally as protected as the workers in, um, in other areas, that, you know, none of our civil servants should have to put their lives in, je in jeopardy. So I, I want us to continue the fight for them. And I want to say to um, teens in charge, take charge, that of course we're going to fight for SYEP and um, that my colleagues are, are behind us and we're going to make sure that there is some kind of programming for young people this summer. So you don't have to waste your efforts on us. Go talk to the administration about saving um, SYEP. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Rose, and thank you so much for your leadership and your fight for our young people. Now, Councilmember Holden. I right, thank you, everyone, and certainly Council thank Member you. Holden, your time will start now. Thank you again. Uh, I want to thank Corey Johnson, speaker, who did a great job mm -hmm. during the pandemic, along with Jason Goldman, to set up this historic uh, meeting, which is uh, where I, I love being part of the uh, city council. But doing this is such a, a task, I can imagine, and I want to thank them again. I want to thank my great staff who are working really hard during this uh, pandemic, and it puts, it puts a lot of stress on everyone. But also, I want to just mention about the people who have lost loved ones. And right now, I have a lot of cemeteries in my district, and we're seeing a lot of funerals, but the, the cemeteries have cut back. Uh, on their burials because of the lack of staff. So they need help. I wrote to the mayor, wrote to the governor a number of times, try to get the out of work construction workers to help out uh, in, in, the, uh, in the cemeteries and get paid for it. Um, because we're waiting now, families are calling me, they're waiting two and three weeks for funerals. And, and it's, it really puts more stress on them, obviously. So we, re we really need to step up as a city and help out the, uh, the cemetery. So, Thank you again, everyone, and uh, uh, and really stay safe. Thank you. Thanks, Bob, to you and Amy and to your kids and grandkids. Thanks, Thank you. Bob. Are there any other members who are on the list to speak, Parliamentarian? No, Madam Majority Leader, there are no other members. I just want to close out by thanking again Speaker Corey Johnson and all my colleagues here today. Um, this is historic and it's unprecedented and there's nothing harder, I would say, that all of us have experienced as being leaders to have to lead from inside. We naturally want to be up front. We naturally want to be at the forefront. And for me, as a mom of a two-year-old with two parents that are both over the age of 80, it has been the hardest thing as a leader to have to stay indoors and to have to lead my community at the same time. But I want to thank this council because you all have led the efforts from everything from fighting to close our schools, to alternate side of the street parking suspensions, to closing our playgrounds, for the fight for our small businesses, for the fight for PPE, because we know that we sent many people, many black and brown people, many women of color onto the front lines without protective gear. And it's a tragedy that they were sent out in that way. And we're gonna do everything that we can in our council to fight for them, to make sure that we right these wrongs and that we continue to fight for them because they have made it so that many of us could leave from inside. So I wanna thank everybody, especially on the council for what we did for, to get emergency food aid to many of our shut-ins, for many of our seniors who could not go out and get food, who could not go out and get the packages of food from the food pantries and the deliveries that have been made. 
I want to lift up mutual aid and one community in my district who've been working with our NYCHA tenant leaders, many of them who are senior citizens who are out on the front lines getting the food for the seniors. And they themselves can't be out there and, I, and, and should not be out there. And I, I just want to thank my staff. It's so hard to call staff to give them an assignment and you find out that they're on their way to the hospital or they have to get tested or their kids are sick or their parents are sick. This has been really a very challenging time and I just wanna lift up, while there have been so many passings in my district, I wanna lift up Dr. Roy Hastick, who is the founder of the Chamber of the, the, the Caribbean American Chamber of Commerce, who is a king of Brooklyn, who has done so much to advance local businesses in the Caribbean community, as well as Pastor Gwen Dingle, who has been a fighter and a champion on the front lines of the HIV movement. She is a, a powerful leader, and we are so sorry that we have lost her as well. And, and we're gonna continue to look forward and, and to continue to lead. And thank you so much. And I beg of you, please stay home. This is not over. While the numbers are leveling, this is far from over. And we have to continue to stay at home, practice social distancing, to wear our masks, and to take this very seriously. So with that, Speaker Corey Johnson, I turn it over to you to close out this meeting. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for bringing this body together. And thank you for hosting this unprecedented meeting that has kept us all at home today and is a, a thankful wish to Earth Day that we were not out there and gave the Earth a break. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for those incredibly moving uh, closing remarks. I'm really grateful for your leadership. And I just want to wrap up by thanking all of you, all of the members of this body who have been working around the clock to serve your constituents and to look out for the future of New York City. I want to echo and reiterate some of the, I think, very poignant and uh, smart and helpful remarks that the majority leader just gave, especially as it relates to how we're all in this together. Uh, we need to continue to practice social distancing. You know, three weeks ago, we were losing 900 New Yorkers a day. Now the number is down to about 450, half of that. But that is still an astounding number of people who are dying every single day of COVID-19 in New York City. And as painful and difficult as it is for New Yorkers to be socially distanced right now and physically isolated, it is so important for us to do that because we need to relieve and keep that pressure off of our healthcare system. We need to think about these healthcare heroes making their jobs easier. These folks that are scared every single day leaving their homes, leaving their loved ones and their children, going into work to save other people. We need to think about these grocery store workers who are getting on the subway every single day, leaving their homes so that New Yorkers can still get food. We have to think about the NYPD officers and the firefighters and the correction officers the subway conductors and the bus drivers, the postal workers and the pharmacists, all of these workers that are keeping our city going right now, they are our heroes. And we are immensely, immensely grateful for what they have done during this time. We need to lift them up by making sure they are protected and paid better, but also to keep them safe by continuing the social distancing that's in place. We're gonna have to start to have the conversation about what mass testing looks like about what contact tracing looks like, about what surveillance looks like, so that we can actually go at this virus and take it uh, and do our best to make sure that we are able to safely at some point reopen and do it in the right way, not in a rushed way or a rash way, but in a smart way by looking at what other cities and countries and around the world have been doing. This city council, I want New Yorkers to know, all of the members have been working every single day to serve their communities and to look at these broader issues that are affecting our great city. I think it's important to level with New Yorkers about how difficult this is and how the days ahead are gonna be difficult, but also talk about the hope that I have. It's gonna be difficult because there's going to be a shared sacrifice involved. A shared sacrifice as it relates to making painful budget decisions we would never wanna contemplate. Uh, difficult, because we're gonna have to continue, even when we start to try to uh, reopen in a small way with mandatory mask wearing and social distancing and the things that are gonna be required of us. These things are gonna change our way of life, but I am hopeful. 
And I am hopeful because our city is the greatest city in the world, and it's the greatest city in the world, not because of our geography, but because of the 8.6 million New Yorkers who live here. They are the beating heart of New York City. They are the soul of New York City. We are the most diverse city in the United States of America. Queens County is the most diverse county in the United States of America. And we have seen incredible sacrifice and solidarity during the last five to six weeks. We have seen neighbors take care of neighbors. We have seen people do food deliveries. We have seen these essential workers put their lives on the line. We have seen young people delivering groceries to older people. We have seen all of this in one of the most painful moments in our history. And I have hope that we can get through this. We will be a changed city. Our city will not be the same, but we can still come back if we remain united, if we are compassionate and kind and strategic and thoughtful about how to get through this. And that is gonna require us looking at some of the hard and glaring truths that exist, the truths on disparities, the truths on uh, uh, structural racism that exists in our society. And I hope that we can take this moment as a transformation point. In the 1940s, after the war, the UK decided to set up the NHS, their National Healthcare Service, knowing they needed to do something transformational. It is my hope that we'll be able to do something transformational here. Healthcare needs to be a basic civil right, not tied to employment, and not tied to profit. We need to make sure that all New Yorkers are being protected. And you have seen these frontline workers, most of them black and brown people, most of them black and brown women who have continued to step up day after day. We need to recognize that. We need to honor them and protect them and make decisions that are going to help them and their families moving forward. That is the best way to actually honor the lives of all of the New Yorkers that we have lost. Our North Star in this budget process and moving forward is to take care and protect the most vulnerable, to ensure that we are doing right by all of these families that have lost loved ones and the families that continue to sacrifice every single day. These glaring holes in our social safety net when it comes to housing and food and healthcare and wages are more glaring than ever right now in the midst of this pandemic. But if we stay united, if we stay one New York, just like we got through the fiscal crisis of the 1970s, just like we got through 9-11 together, just like we got through the Great Recession together, and just like we got through Hurricane Sandy together, we can get through this. But we need to look out for our young people and our seniors and our public housing residents and our healthcare workers and our essential workers and all of these folks that are counting on us. That needs to be our North Star. So I am incredibly grateful for the staff that made today possible. I'm grateful to all of you for being part of this historic meeting today. We have committee hearings coming up tomorrow and Friday and next week. And I wanna thank you all for your solidarity and for your continued support and working together to help our city get out of one of the biggest crises that we've ever faced. So I want to thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for doing a wonderful job today in being the presiding officer of this meeting. <clears throat> I want to thank Lance Pollavy for being our parliamentarian and doing a great job. I want to thank all the sergeants who have been on the call, led by Carl D'Alba, our director of security. I want to thank Jason Goldman, my chief of staff, and all of the uh, all of the uh, central staff members at the council and district office members who have been working remotely serving constituents, getting us up and going, drafting bills, working on the city's budget. We have been working around the clock and we will continue to do that. So with that, Madam Majority Leader, I wanna sign off and tell New York City, I love you. We love this great city and we will get through this together. So with that, the stated meeting of April 22nd, 2020 is now adjourned. Godspeed, be safe New York City. We're here for you.